write in the chat if there are problems, technical problems. Okay, so we'll start now. Okay. Hi, guys. Welcome, everyone. My name is Flora Breccia and I am a math teacher. We are ready to start our virtual lesson. I hope the lesson will be fun for you. Are you ready? It's okay. The audio? Okay. Let's start. Now, Raquel will introduce you the lesson. Hello, good morning, everyone. In this lesson, our students will uh, be the protagonists because they cooperated in creating a virtual itinerary and through the Google app, My Maps. As you know, it has been shared with you, so you will be able, you are able to open it and follow it there. But especially after our lesson, it will be at your disposal. So you can, for your homework assignment or whenever you want, it will be there and you can look at it and see it whenever um, you feel more comfortable. Um, this is also a listening activity. So please keep this, this worksheet here. This one here is the only worksheet that needs to be printed out. Keep it at hand and try to complete it while you listen. All right? Um, you will also see pictures while our students speak, so you can follow that. The choice of making our lesson with a virtual itinerary and, and then a kind of a forecast documentary was made because we wanted to let you know something about our culture, our traditions, through the places we live in. Place, places that hopefully you will be able to see and visit when you come here next November. We can't wait, but in the meantime, let's get started with Alessia and enjoy it. Before starting, I want to briefly introduce um, our school and my class. The institute is named in honor of Vincenzo Cardarelli, an Italian poet, writer, and journalist, born and raised in Cerquinia. The city is located in the center of Italy, one hour north from Rome, and very close to the sea. Our school has two, three different headquarters, two in Tarquinia and one in Tuscania. Uh, the aim of our lesson to let you discover our history and towns. Our school offers two different courses, Liceo, high school, and uh, technical, technical institute. The Liceo guarantees a very good preparation for university, and we can choose between classical and scientific studies, both mainly based on philosophy, history, science, um, for languages and literature but the classical one is more focused on a humanistic subject, while the scientific one is more focused on science, math, and physics. The technical institute want to give direct access to the labor market, and we can choose between tourism, surveyor, IT economics, and agriculture. So today, my friends and I, we will take you through a virtual itinerary by the Google application My Maps that will be shared with you. We will introduce you our history, towns, traditions, and culture through the place that you will be able to see online from now and we would like to show you next November. Enjoy it and feel free to ask any questions. Now I leave the word to Altea. Now we are going to discover the Tuscan world because here in Tarquinia there is one of the most important archaeological areas. It is called Necropoli of Monterozzi where we can find about 6,000 tombs. At first glance, so you can see tumulus, but downstairs there are beautiful funeral chambers, and in many of them, there are very beautiful paintings too. An example could be Tombs of the Leopards, that is a Tomba di Leopardi in Italian, that is one of the most known in our area. I think it is also important to remember another archaeological part of Tarquinia, that is the Civita Plateau. The most relevant building is Ara della Regina Temple because on its top, winged horses have been found and they are now exhibited in our museum, in our Etruscan National Museum and in the old, in the old town and uh, as a symbol of our Tarquinia. 
out to suffer from epilepsy. Uh, this child has been associated with the legend of Tages and Tarkun, according to which this child, Tages, would have taken the art of divination to Etruscans, and in particular to, the, to their king, Tarkun. What about our museum? It is one of the most famous in the world for Etruscan arts, and in particular for, the, for our vases uh, in black fires and red fires, but also for objects of, of everyday life, like, for example, cups for wine and water, but also for repairs that come from our, necro our necropolis. I think it is also important to remember, as I said before, that in our museum there are also the winged dorses that are now the symbol of our town. Thank you for your attention. I leave the word to Gabriele. The Church of St. Francis was built between the 13th and the 14th century after a miracle made by St. Francis. It replaces an old oratory. In 1959, Lazio's entity has renovated the church. The church presents both Romanic and Gothic styles. It is also a, a bell tower built in, in the 7th century. The cloister uh, is on the right of the church and it is richly decorated. It is also a very lush garden cared for by friars. And in the middle of this garden, there, there are a well and the statue of uh, St. Francis. Yeah, our scientific high school once was located in this cloister, so it is a part of our school history. Now Nicoletta will introduce you one of the most impressive church in Tarquinia. Maybe if you're a tourist or a stranger to Tarquinia, you would unlikely know about this place. It is really easy to reach since it's quite in the middle of the historical center. <clears throat> Indeed, if you casually run about in a Ripa Street, you would find an arch with a narrow alley that leads you to Santa Maria in Castello. <clears throat> the name is kind of false friend with Castello, that means castle. In fact, it's just a church, quite a big one. It is surrounded by um, walls with a tower and a square in front of it. <clears throat> it is, um, there's even a descent that leads you to an half abandoned road where you can see a beautiful view of Tusha. It is hardly ever open uh, since it is in disuse, but for occasions as uh, weddings or Christmas holidays, it's full of people because of elementary and middle school recitals. It is a peaceful place if you'd like some rest from the noisy center, or if you'd like to stay in touch with the nature as well. Now, I'll leave the word to Chiara. In Tarquinia, there is a special place where the sunset looks like a picture by Monet. This, during this time of the day, the sun falls into the sea, into the salt pans. The salt pans of Tarquinia uh, are located near the old port of Gravisca, today Porto Clementino. They have a very ancient origins. In fact, the historians believe that they were born in Etruscan or Roman times. The Saline, the Saline Nature Receive is a, site, a natural site of great importance. In fact, they are the only one of, of salt pans in the Lazio region and the uh, one of you remaining along the Italian coast. The site is home to many species of sedentary and migratory birds uh, throughout the year, including a pink flamingo, grey iron, coral gulls, millar, pheasant, quails, and many others. It is also possible to find a land animals such as foxes, turtle, squirrel, porcupine, uh, and nutrias. A curiosity about this place is that uh, the film The Adventure of Pinocchio in 1972 by Luigi Comencini was set in the large part in the salt, salt pans of Tarquinia. For example, the scene where uh, Pinocchio Candlewick, meet Candlewick, uh, his future classmate, was shot in the, uh, in the salt ponds. 
And now let's go and have fun with Benedetto. Giostra delle Contrade is an historical revocation that takes place every year in the first weekend of June in Tarquinia. There are 10 Contrade that contend the Palio del Saracino dedicated to Madonna di Valverde. Uh, this year the feast will take place in the dates between the uh, 1st and the 3rd of June. On Easter Sunday, the procession of the uh, risen Christ is celebrated in Tarquinia. It is also known as the uh, running Christ because the statue uh, is uh, carried along the streets of this Etruscan town, uh, almost running over the crowd. Uh, and uh, then the statue is kept in St. Joseph's Church for a while. Among all the dishes you can eat with us, uh, the oldest one is acqua gotta, a typical dish of lower Maremma cuisine, so both of Maremma Grossetana and Viterbese, in Latium and uh, Tuscany. It came from the typical lunch of Butteri when they were in open countryside, uh, and uh, many people uh, find assonances with the medieval arcidocin soup, which is based on other ingredients, uh, from which the name Aquagota. And now we live in Tarquinia of about 25 kilometers, and we are going to visit uh, another town, Tuscania, uh, where there is the other side uh, of our school. Tuscania is one of the most beautiful landscapes in southern Etruria, with its medieval walls, towers, Romanic church, and a sweet and spoiled countryside. Our story begins with the Etruscan civilization, that's why we find sarcophagi in the central square, in churches and historic buildings. Another pleasant place is Lavello Park, inside the district center. The entrance to the park is one of the most evocative images of Tuscania. Here we have a view of the medieval hill of St. Peter uh, with its cathedral and the ancient fortified Palazzo di Rivellino. In the park there is a beautiful fountain and several types of trees and shrubs full of colors. Thanks and now I leave the chair to Alessia. I'll show you St. Peter Church. It is one of the most fascinating monuments of Tuscania. Founded in the 8th century, today is considered a jowl or Romanesque Lombard art. On the facade, we can find imagined carving stones, typical of the Middle Age, when reality and fantasy have symbolic meanings and nature becomes a source of inspiration. The rosette, symbol of Trinity, is framed by the symbol of the four evangelists and two beavers. The symbol of the four evangelists are the lion belonging to St. Mark, the angel to St. Matthew, the ox to St. Luke, and the eagle to St. John. On the left, there is the live tree, where on top we have the onion's day. On the right, instead, we have the evil tree, where on the side there are some mermaids, symbol of evil. Now you discover another famous church in Tuscania with Aurora. Hi, I will talk about another jewel of Tuscania, the Santa Maria Maggiore's Church. It was the first cathedral of Tuscania until 852 AD when it lost its title in favor of St. Peter's Church. The facade is not symmetrical because symmetry was not very important in the Middle Ages. The disordered decoration is the result of readaptation of parts after severe earthquakes. In the rosette, there are the symbols of evangelists that you know very well. Do you remember where you saw them? Alessia has just told uh, about them before me. The figures of St. Peter and St. Paul are carved in the jumps. Inside there is a famous fresco called Last Judgment, and the Tauris admired this fresco, very similar to Giotto's painting. Before leaving our tour, Tarquinia Toscana, we would like to propose an activity with uh, Etruscan number of letters with Mamadou. <laughs> 